Russia provided satellite data to the Yemeni Houthis for attacks on merchant ships in the Red Sea. The Wall Street Journal reported this, citing sources, particularly in Europe, defense ministries. Attacks on vessels including commercial ships in Middle Eastern waters by Houthi militants in Yemen have been ongoing since late last year. The Iran-backed group continues to assault what has been described as a major artery of global trade, further contributing to the destabilization of the region. The Houthis, which began their attacks late last year over the Gaza war, eventually began using Russian satellite data as they expanded their strikes, said a source familiar with the matter along with two European defense officials to Western media. The Wall Street Journal also reported that the data was transmitted to the Yemeni Houthi fighters through members of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. One source from the American edition clarified that these Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps members were integrated into the Houthis in Yemen. Additionally, in September, Western media reported that Russia plans to transfer Yakont missiles to the Yemeni militants as well. Two regional officials briefed on the negotiations confirmed that the Houthis and Russians have met in Tehran at least twice this year. Talks regarding the supply of dozens of missiles with a range of about 300 kilometers are ongoing, with more meetings expected in Tehran in the coming weeks. Previously, Russia supplied Yakont missiles to Hezbollah, an organization backed by Iran. One source said that the negotiations began under Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi, who died in May in a helicopter crash. Russia is negotiating with the Houthis for the transfer of Yakont supersonic anti-ship missiles, said a Western intelligence source. The Iranians are brokering the talks, but do not want to have their signature over it. The Red Sea has become a battlefield for shippers since the Houthis began their campaign targeting ships traveling through the waterway, which once saw $1 trillion of cargo pass through it yearly. Houthis have targeted more than 80 merchant vessels with missiles and drones since the war in Gaza started in October 2023, triggered by the Hamas attack on Israel. In response to the Houthi attacks, a US-led coalition has carried out airstrikes in Yemen and Israel has attacked the port of Hodaida. The latter serves as a key location for the delivery of aid and commercial goods which are critical as the country is reliant on imports. Russia has been heavily relying on refurbishing older tanks, such as the T-72, T-62, and T-55-54 models, from its Soviet-era stockpiles. Most of its current tank fleet on the battlefield is relying on tanks no longer in production. While this has allowed Russia to preserve more advanced tanks like the T-90M, Russia's Soviet reserves are depleting quickly, and the tank fleet is on a sharp decline. Since the beginning of the full-scale war, the Russian armed forces have removed almost all of their T-80 tanks from storage, 90%. The Omsk 22nd storage base for T-80 tanks of the Russian armed forces has been completely emptied. Satellite images of the base also confirm this. Also, since February 24, 2024, the Russian armed forces have lost almost a thousand units of this type of tank. Very soon, these tanks will cease to exist in service with the Russian Federation, and this is a very, very good tank. Basically, the tanks remaining in storage in the Russian Federation are T-62, T-64 and T-72 of the most shaggy years. Ascent analyst at HIMARST, who tracks open-air storages and shares insights on X, provides a more detailed assessment. He reported that by July 6, 2024, Russia's stock of T-55s had dropped by 31%, T-62s by 37%, and T-80BS by 79%, with only 9% of T-72s removed from storage. While these figures may not be exact, they provide a good idea about the rapid depletion of Russia's tank reserves. Given that since the beginning of its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russia has lost over 3,000 tanks. Information that can be independently confirmed by open source projects such as Oryx or Warspotting. Russia has lost more tanks than it had in its entire pre-war active duty tank force, 
as well as and over 30% of its most advanced self-propelled artillery and multiple rocket launcher systems. A report from senior analyst Dara Masakot, published by the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, further details that Russia is expected to exhaust its stockpile of multiple Soviet-era military equipment by 2026. As the initial invasion has evolved into an attritional war, understanding the enemy's will to fight, their resources, and their ability to replace losses becomes critical in order to calculate the trajectory of war. Any attritional war ultimately becomes a test of societal endurance, war economics, diplomacy, and the ability to replace losses. As the war drags on, these problems intensify, pushing one side closer to a tipping point where continuing the war worsens their position. Military production and the capacity to replace losses are among the war's tangible factors that can be calculated and projected well.